What's going on, friends? I get asked a lot about the Twin Cams Cam Chest, and what's a good year to buy, and what do I need to know as far as going about converting it? Well, while we all know the issue with the spring tensioners on the early models, what you may not know is when you're going to look at gears or upgrading to a hydraulic system, it can definitely vary by the year of Twin Cam engine that you're running in your bike. I get asked a lot about early model twin cams, 99 to 2006. They have an excellent price on them, but as all of you may be aware, it always comes back to that tensioner system in the cam chest. Now, essentially, we all kind of know what happened. In the beginning, in 99 to 02, there was an issue with the cam chains. They had a sharp ridge on them that was more well suited for a chainsaw. And basically you had the spring tensioner on there that's applying this consistent pressure onto that cam chain. And the higher the RPMs went up, the faster you spun the crank, the more it dug into it, and it just chipped away at more plastic from the tensioner shoe, and then you pretty much had catastrophic engine failure. Now, 2003, they got the cam chain fixed. They didn't have the sharp edge on them, but we still had the spring tensioner. Now, also in 2003, this is when they did away with the Timken bottom end. And by doing away with the Timken bottom end and going into press fit cranks, they were having more run out with these crankshafts. And the issue with that was, is that the tensioner was still applying that consistent pressure onto the cam chain. And with the excessive run out, the more the bike ran, the more miles you put on it, it would eventually wear away the shoe with the wobbling pinion shaft from the additional run out created. Before we get too far into it today, guys, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like, help the video out, and if you like what you're seeing, please consider subscribing to the channel as well. So naturally, with all of the bad stories floating around out there, if you're looking at a Twin Cam 88, the first thing on your mind is definitely replacing and upgrading those spring tensioner shoes. But if you have a newer model Twin Cam, 07 to the present, there's some other little things that you're going to need to be aware of if you're looking at doing away with the tensioner system completely and going to a gear set. So depending on what kind of upgrade you're wanting to do, it's going to depend on your year. And also, not only that, everything comes down to your pinion runout. Now, 99 to 02, they had better pinion runout. Now, while 2003 to 2005 models got more miles out of those spring tensioners, with those crankshafts having more run out, and with that consistent pressure being applied from that spring tensioner onto the cam chains, while you were getting more miles, it's still a threat to the engine. Now, of course, in 2006, on the Dyna model only, they went to the hydraulic tensioner system, which actually filled with oil, and they used a very, very high quality Delrin pad on there, and what this did with the hydraulic tensioner system was this allowed it to actually flex a bit more and compensate for the actual run out within the crankshaft. Now, of course, this continues all the way till 2017 when that was the last year of the twin cam engine. Now, while the new style is much more reliable, a lot of people still want to go ahead and go with the gear system. And we're going to get into the gear system and what's really required to change over to a gear system. But first, let's take a look at those first gen 88s from 1999 to 2002 and what you got to do on those. So for you guys that have the early twin cams from 1999 to 2005 and even the 2006 non dyna models, one thing that you definitely want to do here is you're going to want to upgrade your cam plate. You could take a late model cam plate from say a 2006 Dyna or newer twin cam 2007 and up and you can get some conversion cams. Now what these conversion cams are going to do is they're going to allow you to use the newer style cam plate with the hydraulic tensioners but at the same time they're also going to allow you to eliminate the old style cam plate which actually had cam bearings in it. The newer style cam plate actually used bushings and now while this is important, you don't have to worry about those worn cam bearings contributing to any additional run out. Now this is where your crankshaft run out comes into play. Before you go out and you order a bunch of parts, you're going to have to tear the bike down and actually measure the pinion run out on that shaft. Because when it comes to the pinion run out on the shaft, for gears, you want to be at two thousandths or less. 
maybe three thousandths, but I would not go any more than three thousandths. That pinion shaft is going to tell you everything you need to know going forward. Now when it comes to pinion shaft run out, Harley Davidson seems to be okay with upwards of ten thousandths. Now this isn't great, but like I said, Harley Davidson seems to be okay with it, and it's okay if you're running a stock cam plate and you're not going with the race plate with the high volume oil pump which has extremely tight tolerances, much tighter than the OE tolerances. Now the rule of thumb when it comes to measuring out your pinion shaft is if you're looking at a gear drive, you really want to be at two thousandths or less. Maybe three thousandths at the most, but generally I like to stay around two thousandths. If you're at three thousandths or above, if you're not planning on splitting the cases, taking the motor down, and replacing the crankshaft, or having your crankshaft balanced and trued up, you would probably be better off going with hydraulic tensioners. Because the hydraulic tensioners, they're actually going to compensate for that excessive runout that you have. 3000 isn't bad on a stock crank, it's not great, but like I mentioned, those hydraulic tensioners will help compensate for that, and you'll still be getting about 40,000 miles out of it, instead of having to worry about them at 15 to 20. Now, if you're looking at upgrading to a high performance cam plate with a high volume oil pump, you really want your run out to be five thousandths or less. Now, if you are at five thousandths or a little bit more and you just have to have one of those, I would highly recommend getting your crankshaft worked over. But if you're not willing to do that, you can install one of those, but you do run the risk of basically shelling all those components out. You can do it, but you want to keep a close eye on your oil changes and watch for any metal that may be coming out of the oil. Now, when it comes to the gear-driven systems, the gear-driven systems really need tight tolerances, two thousandths to three thousandths at the most. Now, with these gear-driven systems, they do make smaller gears to try to widen the tolerances. Now, what you don't want to do is go ahead and order those smaller gear sets to try to compensate for the shaft's runout. Because if you got more than two, maybe three at the most, thousands of run out when it comes to your crankshaft, and you put those smaller gears in there, yeah, the backlash may measure out, everything may seem to be okay with them, but what's going to happen is, is they're not going to run true, they're going to whine, and they're going to wear out sooner rather than later. And then basically all the money you invested in there, it's just pretty much junk. That's why we say that when you want to go with a gear-driven system, you really want to do like a complete engine rebuild, at least with a fresh crank or have your crank trued up and put it back in and go with a big bore kit or something. Putting gears in a 2003 to current twin cam can be a little bit of an issue because of the press fit cranks. But now if you have a 99 to 2002 with the Temkin bottom in, those generally have really good run out at 2000s or less. So it's not normally an issue there. But once again, before you order any parts, make sure you pull the cam chest down and measure your pinion shaft run out to make sure you don't order parts to find out you can't use them, then you can't, then possibly you can't send them back, or make sure you're willing to have your crankshaft rebuilt or replaced. So guys, moral of the story is, before you order anything, tear that cam chest down and get that pinion measurement. That pinion measurement is going to tell you everything you need to know on whether you want to go in and actually true up the crank or replace it or basically overhaul your motor if you wanted to at that time or whether if okay I'm out of spec so instead of the gears I'm gonna go ahead and just upgrade to a hydraulic tensioner system so guys if you were on the fence and you were unsure about whether you wanted to go with a hydraulic tensioner update or you wanted to go with gears I really hope this kind of helped you out a little bit before you went out ordered some parts and then found out you can't use them or this is going to cost a heck of a lot more to put it in than what you anticipated. But anyhow guys, if you find an earlier model twin cam, it's in great shape and the price isn't too bad, I wouldn't shy away from it if you're willing to go ahead and put a little work into it just to make sure you get that cam chest upgraded so that your good deal on a used motorcycle doesn't come to be the biggest disaster you ever purchased. But as always, don't forget if you have a 99 to 05 or 06 Touring or Softail model, it is always worth going ahead and upgrading to the later style cam plate if you're not going to do anything else. That way you eliminate the bearings and you get a much better oil pump. Well guys, that's all I've got for you this week. 
I hope that helped you out, kind of, if you're on the fence about deciding on whether you want to go with a gear-driven system or you just want to upgrade to the, the more modern hydraulic system. But anyhow, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But until next week, guys, please stay safe out on the streets, dodge the cars, and I will catch you guys in next week's video. Thanks for watching.